Hi, everybody. It's me, Cheryl Richardson, and I'm here with you for this week's Facebook Live. Welcome. I look forward to spending some time with you, and tonight we're going to talk about creating abundance, unconventional ways to make more money and to, well, to really increase your wealth, both on the inside and on the outside. So before I do that, I'm going to start by welcoming people. So let's see who's here. Feel free to just post your name in the comments section and tell me where you're from. That would be a great way to start. And that way I also know that you all can see me and hear me just fine. <laughs> so I'm going to wait just a moment as, yes, thank you. Let's see if I can do this here. Yeah, here we go. Great. Hi, Nazrat. Welcome. Welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you. And CJ and Cindy from Santa Cruz. Hi, Cindy. Welcome, Maria and Tess. Um, thank you so much, Tess. Leah is here from Toronto. Hi, Leah. And Teresa, always, always faithful Teresa is here. And um, Joanne and Tonya, welcome. Elena and Susan. Um, oh, good. I'm so glad the... Um, I'm so glad the advice about insomnia helped from last week. That's fantastic. Hi, Linda and Alice and Doug and Joan and Julie and Terry. Welcome, everybody. This is great to have you here. Um, <laughs> Elena, the future. Yes, Elena is writing in from the future in Foxton Beach, New Zealand. <laughs> so tell me, Elena, how is the future? <laughs> Are things going okay tomorrow? Will things be okay for us tomorrow? God, I hope so. Anyway, hi, Deborah from London. I'm glad you're here. And Nancy from New Orleans. I was there in May and it was beautiful. Sheila, welcome to you. Yes, I remember. Sheila, I didn't know you moved to Wisconsin. Um, hey, hey, Cheryl Crowley. Yes, I remember you and um, your brother. I'm seeing his face and I can't, I want to say Mark. Is that who I went to school with? Anyway, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And Karen and Joanne, um, and Sandy, and Valerie, and David. Uh, I've become what you've told me I could become. Oh, good. I hope it was good. It's always good, because I try to always be positive. Anyway, I'm really glad that you're all here. And uh, I wanted to, tonight's topic about creating abundance, uh, bringing more money into our lives, uh, came about as a result of the fact that I was paying a bill yesterday. I was paying a bill, a very large bill, for something that I didn't expect. It was for some home repairs that were unexpected but necessary. And um, I noticed when I went to pay the bill, I noticed something surprising to me. I suddenly felt like I had flashed back 20 years, 25 years. And I noticed when I went to my checking account to actually pay the bill, I still handwrite <laughs> a lot of my checks rather than do them online. But when I went to my checkbook to pay the bill, um, I noticed this feeling of fear like, um, oh God, the, uh, you know, my balance is going down, which I used to think that all the time. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And, um, and so I was writing out the check and I was just feeling all this anxiety about, oh, I didn't expect this. We didn't plan for this. And, um, you know, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful we can afford it. We've taken good care of our money over the years, but it still was really uncomfortable. And it brought up a lot of fear for me because um, I grew up feeling fearful about money. And so anyway, I just noticed it and I thought, oh boy, I know exactly what I need to do. Um, because I've been here before and I used to be here a lot when I was younger. And so I know exactly what to do. And I want to share some of what I did with you. I'm going to start by reading an entry, a journal entry out of Waking Up in Winter because I talk about it in here. I talk about one of the strategies or a couple of the strategies that I use. So I'm going to start by, um, so it's Waking Up in Winter. Oops, there we go. In search of what really matters at midlife. One of the good things about being conscious about money and taking care of your money is you have more choices in life. And certainly later in life, you have more opportunities to um, really contemplate 
your life and where you've come from and what you want. And um, you just you just are freer to make more choices. So it's always really good to take care of your money. And uh, it's a topic that I'm very fond of. It's an area that I've worked in for a very long time, long before I was a coach. I was a tax consultant and I used to help people with their money. So I'm very comfortable in that world. Um, so I wanted to read a journal entry from Waking Up in Winter. For those of you that don't know, it's my latest book and it's... Um, it's a memoir in journal form, really about what it means to live an examined life. That's kind of what I do with my writing. I live an examined life and then I share what I learned with you in the hopes that it's helpful and that it also helps you to feel, to know that you're not alone. So anyway, um, I'm going to, I'm going to read you this section and then I'm going to talk about um, some of the things we can do to create more wealth. Uh, in my late 20s, so I had just come back from traveling I had been traveling for two weeks. So it says here, after almost two weeks of travel, there's a whole tub of mail from the post office, books, CDs, bills, magazines, and catalogs. I've learned to be ruthless, quickly weeding out everything that's non-essential and piling it up for the recycling bin. I do this when I go to the post office. When in doubt, throw it out is my mantra. Once the mail is sorted, I prepare to pay bills. Over the years, with Michael's help, I've trained myself to see this activity as an abundance ritual. In my 20s, when I struggled to make ends meet, the folder that contained my bills was a source of anxiety. And boy, do I remember that. And how many of you, like, I remember wanting to just avoid that file folder. It's, it was labeled bills to be paid, and I just wanted to avoid it because it made me so uncomfortable. Um, as I paid them, I saw the amount in my checking account dwindle, and I never felt like there was enough. Finally, fed up with suffering, I took on my financial health as a serious project and got an extra job. I created a plan to eliminate my debt, and over the course of a year, I used the extra money from my part-time job to pay off my credit cards once and for all. Then I trained myself to keep the balances small enough so they could be paid in full at the end of the month. That took me a year to really train myself to do that. And over the, um, over the year, I actually made debt elimination a game. I've probably said this to you before, but I made a list of all of my debt and I put it in order of um, the highest interest rate on the top. And I put as much money as I could toward the debt that had the highest interest rate and just made the minimum payments on the debt below that. And then once I paid off the first credit card or whatever it was, then I would move to the next and continue to do the same thing. And I really made it a game. I kept track on the wall in my office and I celebrated every time I got a credit card paid off or got something paid off. Um, I'm grateful that throughout my marriage, Michael has shared my desire to live debt free and well within our means. And that came about as a result of not living debt free and well within my, my means in my 20s and really suffering because of it, always being anxious about money, never knowing how I was gonna pay the next bill, and I hated it. I just hated worrying about money. Um, that said, Michael's always been more comfortable spending money, and as both our incomes have increased, he's helped me to see that doing things like hiring people um, to do things we no longer want to do or making purchases that enhance our life in some way is simply a way of circulating the energy of abundance. That's a really important thing to recognize as well, is that as you make money, when you're able to hire people to help you, or when, you're, when you buy a car or you buy food, you're employing other people. You're spreading the abundance around. You're creating, you know, you're contributing to this circle of abundance. Um, this new belief about the circle of abundance inspired me to create a ritual of gratitude and celebration when paying our bills, and I've done so ever since, except last week when I was making, or this a couple of days ago when I was making that big payment and I was feeling anxious about it, I completely forgot about this whole way of operating and I just went into a regress state and suddenly felt like, oh my gosh, what if there's not enough? Um, you see, we all regress. It's just normal part of being human, but you gotta catch yourself and that's what I did. So today, in, this, in the journal, I'm saying, today I gathered my supplies, a pile of cards with beautiful art and positive messages, colorful stickers, and my favorite stamps. I like mixing beauty, creativity, and an element of surprise when paying bills because it makes it fun. After writing checks and putting them in envelopes, I place a card from one of my decks 
in the ch in, in with the check and then use postage stamps with images of hearts or animals or love or the word love. I love the idea of sending one of my grace cards to the IRS or a self-care card to our insurance company. Recently, I discovered that the man who mows our lawn saves the cards I send him, and it makes me smile to think of the collection hanging on the wall in his office. I've used this ritual for a long time now, and it has turned what used to be a stressful task into an empowering experience. I have no doubt that the abundance that has come into my life is a direct result of the change in my attitude about money and paying bills. Being grateful as we pay for what we've received invites even more to be grateful for. Now that the mail-in bills are handled, I'm off for an afternoon walk. So that's the entry. And um, so when I do, I sit down to pay cards. I put things like, you know, um, can you see that? I know there's a light in the way. Let's see. I put things like self-care cards in there. I put the daily, my daily affirmation cards. I'm trying to do it and not let, there we go, daily affirmation cards in there. Um, I love just doing, you know, different kinds of, uh, let's see, there we go, different kinds of cards in there. And then I do things like I use, um, see this, love stamps. I'm always looking for love stamps at the post office. There you go. It's another kind of love stamp. Um, and sometimes I do do animals, but I always... I always look for love stamps because I just like the idea of sending love to people. You know, putting that kind of energy around bills. And um, the other thing I do, and I did this the other day when I started to feel anxious about paying the big bill, was um, I write thank you on my checks. And then when I take them to the post office, when I have all of the envelopes, I literally go, I look at each envelope and I say, thank you to the electric company. Thank you to the insurance company. Thank you to the telephone company for, for extending me credit that allows me to use these services. Now, I'm telling you, there are some times where I just want to like, just throw them in the box and say the heck with it. But it really is about creating, um, the right kind of energy around something. It's about shifting the energy, shifting our thinking and our neural programming around money to go from fear to really kind of a sense of love and compassion and generosity. Now, when I was in my 20s and I was finally living alone and I was just starting out as a speaker, just beginning my business as a speaker and really didn't have a lot of money, I was scared a lot. And I also did things like I had a little altar set up in my apartment and I would put a deposit slip on the altar with a certain dollar amount in it that I needed. Just as sort of um, an affirmation to the universe that I believed in the abundance of the universe, even though I didn't have any at the time, it felt like certainly when it came to money and that um, I believed that I would, uh, that I would be able to bring this money into my life somehow. And I'm telling you, I still remember to this day when I put a deposit slip on my altar, which was at just a table in my kitchen, and I wrote $1,500 the, on the deposit slip. And two days later, I received a phone call and somebody booked me to do some business and it was like $1,750. And I remember thinking, holy mackerel, this stuff really works. And this really, you know, this belief in abundance and thinking, thinking, um, just putting the right kind of positive energy around money uh, came from reading books by Emmett Fox and Florence Scovel Shin, The Game of Life and How to Play It, Catherine Ponder, who wrote books about money and abundance and the law of attraction. And um, it wasn't enough to just think about abundance. It was also about doing things, taking action. So being grateful when paying your bills, even if it's a struggle, and I know what it's like to be a struggle, but just being grateful, tapping into gratitude is really, really important. Making debt elimination a game like I talked about is important. Um, it's also, this is also something that was really, really important to me. So along with doing something fun when you're paying your bills, using love stamps or some kind of stamp that spreads message, maybe putting cards. I'll put links to where you can get the cards in the resource section, putting cards in with your bills. Um, uh, 
uh, writing thank you on your checks, blessing your, your bills. And, you know, this might all sound kind of airy, fairy, fluffy, but you know what? I'm living proof that it works. That plus responsible action makes it work. Here's the other thing that's really important, and it's often overlooked and people don't talk about this. And that is, it's so important to catch the way you think about other people who have more than you. When I was younger, and I didn't have a lot of money, so it wasn't easy for me to go out, for example, and buy a new outfit or um, to buy, you know, something pretty for my apartment even. I mean, I remember sometimes the, the best, the, the sort of gift I would give myself is I'd go out when I, I just wanted to give myself a little gift and I didn't have a lot of money, I would go out and buy a lipstick, a new lipstick. And that just made me feel, I don't know, it just felt special in some way. But there were times early in my life where, can you hear the thunder? It's thundering and lightning here. There were times early in my life where I really judged people who had more than me. I remember being in a shopping mall, probably in my late 20s, and seeing a well-dressed woman walk by and she had, you know, she was beautifully dressed, her pocketbook matched her outfit, her shoes matched her outfit, and um, she, just, she just looked well put together. And I remember just having this attitude of like, well, who do you think you are kind of thing. And one day, I caught myself judging somebody who appeared to be more well put together and clearly more well off than I was. And I thought to myself, you know what? Judging this person for what I think is her having more than I have, more money than I have, might be an obstacle to creating more abundance in my life. Because if I'm judging her this way, some part of me has got to be afraid of being judged like that, should I have more. And um, that was a really important moment for me. And I started to catch myself. I just became aware. And self-awareness is really powerful. I always say that. Just becoming aware of your attitude, your reaction to people who have more than you, someone who's driving a nice car, somebody who, um, I don't know, somebody who talks about I don't know, getting a promotion or, you know, we all have people in our lives. I have plenty of people in my life who have way more than I do. And um, I'm so happy for them now. I celebrate their success. Celebrating the financial success of others is a really key, unconventional way, because it's not talked about a lot. It's a really important way that we allow more abundance into our life. Because I promise you, if you're judging people that have more than you, then some part of you is going to be afraid of receiving that same kind of judgment and you're going to hold yourself back. It just, it works that way. I used to feel envious of, you know, the writers who had published books and had best-selling books long before I ever wrote a book or the, the, the teachers who were out speaking when, you know, I so wanted to do that, but I wasn't doing it. And, you know, I'm so grateful that I caught myself early in my life, in my late twenties, probably around 27 or 28, uh, and really started to turn that around and instead began to really celebrate because I decided that, you know, if so-and-so could have a successful book, I could too. If so-and-so could be teaching, if I was committed and I did the work and I cared about people the way that this person did, I could have that as well. And so celebrating the success of others is extremely important. And then, um, the other, the other thing I'll say about creating more abundance, and then I'll, I'll start to take your questions, um, is, uh, God, I want to read, oh, I know, something my dad used to always, my dad taught me, you know, I was in business with my dad um, when I was young, and he taught me, um, I forgot to shut my phone off, he taught me early on about the importance of sharing your wealth. Now, it didn't mean just money, although I think that that's really important. And I make a point. Um, we have a charitable plan and we give money away to things that are deeply important to us, like cat shelters and prison projects and the Center for Wildlife, which I'll tell you about at some point um, soon. I keep saying that, but it'll happen. Um, so it's not just sharing your money, which is important, but it's also sharing your support, your love, your ideas. You know, my friend James Altucher has, is such an advocate 
of sharing great ideas with others. And I love that he tells people to just, you know, pay attention to, you know, the company you'd like to work for or somebody you admire and come up with five or 10 ways that you see they could, you know, five or 10 ways that a company could really capitalize on uh, their, their business, their products, or coming up with five or 10 ideas for other people, ways that they could be more successful happier, uh, you know, thriving in some way and sharing those ideas with them for absolutely nothing, no expectation, not wanting anything in return, but just simply, you know, think about the friends of yours that own their own businesses or maybe friends that want to start a business. How can you really take the time to share your good ideas and your, um, you know, just the thoughts that you have around how to make other people more successful and being willing to share them. And, you know, James talks about how many times he has shared ideas with people that he knows and like down the line been presented with an opportunity by that person because three years earlier he shared ideas with somebody and didn't expect anything in return. And, you know, that's a form of wealth. That's a way that we also circulate, especially if you don't have much money right now. Your ideas are really valuable. Your support is really valuable. Your love is really valuable. Your um, willingness to celebrate the success of someone close to you, to take the time to say, way to go, girl, or way to go, guy, with a project that someone's completed, or the way someone's decorated their home, or the beautiful looks of the flower garden, you know, somebody's flower garden, or you know, the green thumb that somebody has or the meal that someone cooks for you, like really just taking the time to see people, to acknowledge them and to mirror what's great about them is also a way of sharing your wealth. So these are some of, um, there are ways of sharing your wealth and ultimately all of these things, being grateful for the people, your creditors, you know, making bill paying a fun experience, writing thank you on your checks, putting your own deposit slip out with money. I don't even care if you believe me. Don't believe me. Think this is complete BS, but do it anyway. Put money on a deposit slip and put it someplace sacred or special in your home and just watch what happens. Just wait and see what happens. Every now and then when you walk by, just notice it. You don't have to think too hard about it. You don't have to like go crazy visualizing anything. Just notice, oh yeah, I have a deposit slip there with $1,000 on it. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm excited to see what the universe brings me. Doing something like that, you know, holding your intentions, celebrating the success of others, sharing your wealth, all of these things um, are great wealth building strategies that usually don't get talked about, especially in financial planning circles. But as somebody who talks to people about money, the nuts and bolts of money all the time, these are also the things that I share because they not only help to attract more abundance into your life, but they feel really good. Isn't that great? Don't we want to feel good? Celebrate life, right? Celebrate the abundance that's always around us. And I always say that, you know, on Instagram every night, I make a list of five things that I feel grateful for. And I invite my followers to do the same. And I am just blown away every single night by the kinds of things people are grateful for. It just multiplies my gratitude list because I look to see what people are mentioning and I think, oh yeah, I'm grateful for that too. I'm grateful that I can take a hot shower. I'm grateful that I have clean water. I'm grateful that I have family that I love or that you know, I've got a good husband. I'm grateful for the years I got to spend with, with my sweet little cat, even though he's gone or all of the years and the wealth of information I learned from my dad, even though he's not here. I'm grateful for the connection I feel to my dad from the other side. You know, all of, there's always things to be grateful for. So um, I do that on Instagram. I invite you to join me there. Coach on call is my username. And uh, I'll put that in the resource section as well. So, okay. I'm going to now take your questions and we can talk about money and abundance if you'd like. It's always a hot topic, right? And um, otherwise, if you have other specific questions, you can ask me. Bear in mind that uh, because I'm doing Facebook Live now on my laptop instead of my phone, when you ask a question, if it scrolls up, I can't see it. Um, so I'm hoping, uh, let's see, how do we handle those jealous of our abundance? I sat down and made a list of the ways I wasn't maximizing my money. One idea was not taking advantage of professional development funds. So I did extra courses. Let's see if I can get this. 
um, that I didn't have to pay for and landed a great job, not a raise, but great position. My colleagues were furious and treat me very differently because, um, oh, see, this is what I mean. The comment disappears. Okay, so how do we handle how do we handle the jealousy of others? Well, first of all, it's, it's I'm not going to lie, it's challenging. And sometimes I try to remember who I was in my 20s when I was jealous of the abundance that other people had and judge them because of it. And it helps me to have a bit of compassion because when I think back then, I think that, you know, I was just really scared. I was scared and I felt anxious about money and I kind of felt less than. And so sometimes it's helpful to just remember that um, underneath the jealousy or the anger is really just pain. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't completely acknowledge um, the, your feelings about it, because it's hard. If you're working with colleagues and you land a great job or you land a, a, a promotion and they don't, they're going to have their feelings about it. And uh, most people honestly don't stop, take a deep breath and go home and process their feelings. They kind of puke it on other people. And I use that word intentionally because it's gross, but it happens. Don't minimize your success. Don't minimize this wonderful accomplishment. You made a decision. You wanted something. You took action. You took the courses. You made it happen. Please celebrate your success. Sometimes as we start to improve our lot in the world, we end up outgrowing some people, not everybody, but some people. If there are colleagues that are important to you, I mean really important, are worthy of your friendship and are worthy of an honest conversation, people that you feel close to, then I would encourage you to take one aside privately, maybe have go out to lunch or something, and just have an honest conversation where you say something like, I notice that you've been behaving differently since I landed this promotion or this job. And I just wanted to be able to talk about it because you know what? I'm proud of my accomplishment. And what I want for you and everybody else I love is the very same thing. So if there's something I can do to support you in getting that, I'm all ears. Um, but I'm not going to minimize the success that I've experienced. I want that for others too. And that's what I say now too. You know, sometimes people will judge me for what I have or they'll make, you know, I'm very rare. I'm so blessed with lovely people who are just so kind to me. But every now and then somebody will cop an attitude about, make a judgment about me without even knowing who I am and about what I have or how lucky I am versus them. And, um, and in the past, the temptation is to always kind of get small and to minimize my own success. But you know what? That doesn't serve anybody, as Marianne Williamson so beautifully said in her quote many, many years ago, your playing small doesn't serve anyone. Be a beacon of light. Be a power of example. And stand tall. And if there's anybody that you really want to have some kind of ongoing relationship with, then give them time to have their feelings. You process yours with somebody safe. And then sit down and have an honest conversation. And the idea is you want to support them in achieving the same kind of success you're achieving because you ain't backing down. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Sheila says, apology to the universe and whomever I may have puked on. It's very sweet of you, Sheila. Okay. So if you posted a question, do me a favor, just copy and paste it back in because I haven't figured out yet how to be able to see the comments on, um, my laptop, but once they scroll up, they're gone, people, and it makes me nuts. Let's see if I can do it this way. Nope, I can't. Um, so please, um, let me, I have a summer job right now. I don't really like it. Oh, God, this is crazy. Um, so do I take a job that seems aligned with my... Um, with my creative desires and pays well, but doesn't have benefits, or do I stay in a job that I don't really like that doesn't pay well, but has benefits is the question. Um, you know, 
one of the first things I would say is that I always say this numbers don't lie and numbers tell a story. So one of the first things I'd do is um, I'd sit down and I'd actually write the numbers out. So I'm making X amount of dollars a year. My benefits are um, equal to X amount of dollars. What's the value of the benefits? And, um, and then in the new job, how much am I making? If there are no benefits, like just weigh out the, the just concrete pluses and minuses of each side first so that you know what's going on. Because the reality is if you can't afford, so first of all, you might discover that the new job that pays more but doesn't have benefits is equal to the existing job that pays less but does have benefits. Um, uh, so that's just important to know. Numbers don't lie. They tell us the truth about what's going on. Then from there, you've got to step back and look at your financial health. What's the state of your financial health? How much debt do you have? Are you living within your means? Are you able to pay your bills and do you have money left over at the end of the month? Are you using credit cards that you can't afford to use because you're not, you know, the goal with credit cards is to always be working towards bar any unforeseen circumstances because we all have emergencies like our house repairs were a big expense and an unexpected emergency. But the goal is to always get to the point where you only use credit cards and you pay them off every single month. That's really the goal. If you're not able to do that consistently, then you're not living within your means. And that's the real issue to address. And I wish I caught your first name. That's the real issue to address. Um, even before looking at the job situation, you know, because if in fact you're not in a financially stable situation, then you might need to take the job or stay with the job that allows you to work on a debt elimination plan so that you're then able to um, have more freedom of choice in the future. That's a possibility. Now, the other thing you could do is if you, if the new job that pays better and is aligned with your creative and spiritual side really like makes you happy, then you might even consider taking that job and starting a little business on the side or doing some kind of consulting or extra work on the side that you can use to either supplement your benefits or pay off some of your debt. You know, let me just tell you, we are moving more and more toward a more entrepreneurial way of operating. Just the other day I was in, um, where was I? Um, hold on. I know I was in Whole Foods and I was talking to somebody. You know, they call Whole Foods Whole Paycheck. Can I tell you? They're right. Whole Foods is so expensive. I was at Whole Foods getting something and somebody was talking about how, you know, Amazon has bought Whole Foods and Amazon now hires drivers. I didn't know this. Maybe they've been doing it for a while, but they hire people to drive and deliver on a contract basis. And I thought, boy, you know, we really are moving towards a society where more and more people can have a choice about how they work and how they earn money. We saw that with Uber, right? People driving. Um, there are, I mean, every day I go to my local Facebook page and there's always somebody saying, looking for a babysitter, looking for a nanny, looking for somebody to tutor my kid looking for um, somebody to cut down a tree or to plow my driveway or to paint my, the side of my garage. Like there are so many people with needs, organize my closets, help me to eliminate, um, uh, you know, eliminate clutter from my life. I mean, there's so many people with needs just waiting for you to offer your services. And you can do that on the side to make extra money, to help get yourself in better financial shape. And who knows, that might even turn into a business at some point. I just was speaking with a friend of mine this morning in the gym who had been painting houses. And then somebody heard about him and what a great job he did. And they invited him to do another project at their home. And then that person heard about what a great job he did and they invited him to do something at their home. And he said to me, you know, I'm thinking of maybe starting my own business. Like these jobs are just coming to me. And I thought, you know, if you're really good at what you do and you're committed to like being of great service to people, make yourself a little business card and get out there and do it. We're just, we're entering into, and we are in a time, this sort of service economy is providing people with unbelievable opportunities. So, um, 
Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Yes, I'm looking. Anna says, Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, both excellent, excellent um, resources for money information. Um, I have a summer job right now I really dislike, and I'm thinking it's taking away from my ability to focus on myself during the summer. I want to quit, but I'm feeling guilty. How do I avoid the guilt of taking care of myself? How, and how do I balance self-care with making as much money as possible? Well, Anna, you have a summer job right now that you don't like. So are you a student? Like, it's just a summer job. Do you, I mean, th that question sort of makes me feel like you don't really need the job. But if you do, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, if you need the job to support yourself, I would say keep working, right? Um, you have the weekends in the summer or the evenings, or maybe you can take a day off here or there, but I don't quite understand. Uh, maybe you can let me know, hopefully I can see it, whether or not you're a student or whether or not you need to work. But if you need to support yourself, um, I would say keep the job and take care of yourself. Well, okay, you don't need the money. You're a teacher. Oh, yes. Okay. So you don't need the money. You're a teacher um, and you have the summer off, but you, I take it you ended up... Um, you ended up getting a job. Um, yeah, I know. I wish you could talk back to Anna, but you know what? You're doing a great job of talking to me. So, okay. So you don't really need the money. So I wonder why you took the job. The job fell in your lap. Okay. And did it stick to your lap? <laughs> did it say, you have to take me? You have to do me? Like what happened? Um, what made you end up deciding to take it? And you know what? Here's what I'd say, Anna. Sometimes... You know, some, I wonder if um, you sort of fell into this old habit of, oh, my God, you know, the, the, my primary focus is to make sure I have enough money and therefore um, I'm going to just, the job fell into my lap. It's a great job. I'm going to do it. And then you got in there and went, but wait a second. I need, um, yeah, I need to take a break. Okay, so you regret saying yes. So, yes, I would say in the most gracious and loving way, tell the truth. You can just tell the truth. You can say, you know, um, I made a mistake. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So Anna, go back and listen to this. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I really am. This job just fell into my lap and I thought, you know, this is great and I'm going to go ahead and take it, but I've made a mistake. As a teacher, I really, um, I need the summer off before I head back in the fall and I'm going to need to give you my notice and I'm so sorry and if there's anything you could even say if there's anything I could do to help you find a replacement over the next week or two weeks however long you need here maybe the next week I don't know what the job is if there's anything I can do to support you in finding a replacement I'd be happy to do that but I need to leave that's what I would do Anna yeah you're a teacher you need um you absolutely need a break. Oh, look at this. It's letting me scroll back. Unbelievable. Here we go. Um, yeah, so Lorna says, for those of us whose lives appear to reflect a sense of having lost everything for one reason or another, how do we start over in life, especially at midlife? I'm very new to this more spiritual or mystical approach to living. Any guidance, I'm wide open. Well, that's great, Lorna. I'm glad you're wide open. So the first thing I would recommend you do is to sit quietly and write down, in, put in writing, maybe in a journal, what it is you'd really like to have happen in your life. We call it setting an intention, right? Just really, it's one thing to think about what we want. It's another thing to say it out loud. It's another thing to write it down. We give it more power, and then we give it even more power when we start taking action toward it. So what I would say, Lorna, is when it feels like we've lost everything, so it could be through a divorce, it could be getting laid off, it could be, you know, an illness, um, some kind of unforeseen circumstances. Usually, you know, we're in a tough place just emotionally. We don't feel very abundant and we don't, I've been there, we don't feel like we're able to create anything. And honestly, this kind of mystical or spiritual stuff sounds like complete bullshit and can be really upsetting and frustrating when you're really struggling or let's say you're on a fixed income 
I remember what it felt like to be scared about whether or not I could afford food. And anybody who talked about the abundance of the universe, I actually wanted to just whack them because I thought it was complete bullshit. But here's the thing, we've got to start somewhere. So when you're in a position where you feel kind of like, God, you know, I don't have any choices or the world doesn't feel very abundant to me or I'm really scared or I'm anxious about money. The first step is to just write down what you'd really like to see happen in your life without any um, limitations on it. You know, notice that the ego part of you that's going to say, oh, well, you can't have that or you'll never be able to afford that or, you know, that happens to other people, but not you. And just gently ask that voice to take a nap while you're writing down what it is you'd really like fulfilling work. Maybe you know what it is you'd like to do. Um, you know, a, a savings account, uh, a job with retirement, somebody who values me as a midlife um, employee who's reliable and dependable and has a lot of experience. A lot more employers are looking for people like that. Start by writing down what it is you want. And then I would choose three, two or three friends, could be family members as well, but two or three resourceful, loving friends that you could sit down with and you could say to them, here's the one or two things I want and show them your list. Here's the one or two things I want to create in my life. I'm feeling at a loss for kind of resources and ideas right now because of where I'm at emotionally. And I'm wondering if you could help me to create an action plan and just five simple actions I could take towards this. So for example, if you want a new job, Lorna, and you get clear about, here's the kind of job I would like, or here's the kind of job that I'm skilled at. Um, step one might be putting together a resume. Step two might be finding somebody you could show the resume to who's experienced with looking at resumes to let you know whether or not it's any good. Number three, calling a resourceful friend who can help you identify um, where online you might look for job opportunities. Number four, making a list of five skills I have to offer that I'm really good at. Maybe you're a really good decorator or a really good organizer, or maybe you're a great bill payer, a very good bookkeeper, or maybe you cook or you bake, whatever it is, writing down three or four things that I do well. And so that step number four could be sharing it with three friends. Hey, I'm open to baking for people who would like um, some baking done, or I'm open to help people get organized you'd be amazed at what people need support with. I'm, I'm open to running errands for somebody. Um, every, so many people would like somebody to run errands for them. But So that could be the fourth step is just sharing that with two or three people and then come up with a fifth action step based on your conversation with people. And then all you need to start doing, Lorna, is focusing on the first action step. Do your best to bring your mind back into present moment time Instead of worrying, nobody's going to hire me. Remember, if you keep thinking no one's going to hire me, I'm at midlife. And I understand that that fear is real. I get that it's real. I'm not, I'm not going to do this pie in the sky thing with you. But I also know I deal with employers all the time. And they tell me, I'm so sick of hiring people that aren't dependable. I want people with more experience and more commitment and sense of responsibility. And so... You need to just keep affirming to yourself, life loves me and the perfect job finds me. Life loves me and somebody appreciates, somebody who appreciates me as a midlife employee is gonna snatch me right up. Um, it's important to pay attention to those thoughts. But all you need to do is keep bringing yourself back into the present moment when you start to get afraid and go back to your action plan written down, five steps. As you start taking the steps, you will begin to get evidence, like just look for the evidence that life is responding to your intention and your actions. And when you get stuck, ask for help. And if you're not sure you're putting your best foot forward, ask somebody to give you some healthy, loving mirroring. And then also another very important thing is if you wake up and you're feeling like, um, you're just not in a good place. Don't, do not network that day. Don't, you know, go out and talk to people about hiring you or network with people about jobs. Call a good friend and just say, you know, I'm having a tough morning and could we just talk about, you know, this situation and what's going on because um, I just need to get back centered again. Because um, 
once again, it's about putting your best foot forward and you can do that when you're in a better headspace and we're not always in a good headspace. So those are some of the things I would recommend. You know, it's the same thing on a fixed income. Even though there are plenty of people on a fixed income, there are other ways for abundance to come into people's lives, offers of help and support. Just yesterday, some, somebody sent me a beautiful gift of sheets, 100% organic cotton sheets as a gift, completely unexpected. I mean, that was a huge form of abundance. I was shocked at that and completely unexpected. Those things can happen to you whether you're on a fixed income or not. So being open to, you know, one of the best ways we start to notice the abundance in, in our li lives is by being grateful for what we already have. And then also, you know, sometimes there are ways that we can share our talents and gifts and skills like I talked about with other people without even realizing it. So sometimes we just have to open our mouths and say to people, I know I'm on a fixed income, but I'd like to earn some extra money. Can we brainstorm some ideas for how I might be able to do that? You might be surprised by what happens, honestly. Okay, let's see. I'm going to finish up. Um, I'm going to finish up here. Um, Okay. All right. You know what? I know this, thank you for all your questions. I know there's so many of them, but um, I've been on now for 45 minutes, so I'm going to finish up. Please go back and rewatch this video. Write down the steps that I talked about in terms of creating both inner and outer wealth. Please um, also share the video with the people in your life that could really use financial support could use um, to kind of learn uh, some of the skills, the unconventional ways of creating more abundance in their lives. Um, it could be a real gift to them. And um, hopefully it's been a gift to you. Hopefully it will support you in creating more abundance. We all deserve um, to celebrate the abundance of the universe and to partake in the abundance of the universe. And it takes a shift in our mindset, a shift in our actions, a shift in the way we talk about our money and the belief that we're worth it. Okay, thank you for being here with me again. I will in just a little bit post some of the resources here that I talked about. I'm so grateful that you follow me here. Please make sure that you uh, are subscribed to my newsletter list at CherylRichardson.com because that's the first place people hear about what I'm up to, the events that I'm doing. And um, also, I like sharing my abundance and I have something called the um, the good gift, the feel good gift giveaway. And every week I send out a surprise gift to somebody in my community with a handwritten note from me. And um, I have a blast. My assistant Lisa and I have an absolute blast doing it every week. We've just sent out like we're sending out 25 videos. There's people that still watch videos. We're sending out videos. We're sending out cassette tapes because there's people still listening to cassettes. Um, and I'm doing clutter clearing and just sharing a whole bunch of stuff that I've had here with people. I love doing that. That's the benefit of creating more wealth and abundance in your life. You get to share it with others. And to me, that's the most fun. That's the greatest benefit of all. So anyway, I'm so glad you're with me. Thank you for being here. I'll look forward to talking with you again. In the meantime, have a great week and be grateful. Okay. Be grateful. <laughs> all right. Bye everybody.